G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. In this video we're going to talk about TBN detergents, so we'll do a review of detergent chemistry, we'll look at overbased detergent chemistry, and we'll look at how TBNs act in a lubricant. So if you remember from our detergent review, that is the detergent additive uh, video, we called them surface acting agents, which is how we get the word surfactant. Right? So that's what detergents are. And ideally what we wanted is a molecule, um, and we described it in the case of water, so imagine a dish soap. What you want is a molecule that is attracted to oil, but is not attracted to the water. And in the case of lubricants, we want the exact opposite, right? So we want something that is not attracted to the bulk lubricant, but is attracted not necessarily to water, but to polar molecules. Remember, oil is nonpolar, and um, contaminants, so byproducts of oxidation, as well as acid, as well as water, they all tend to be polar. So we want something that seeks out polar additives, sorry, polar molecules. How we accomplish this is by a molecule that has a hydrophilic polar head and a hydrophobic nonpolar tail. So what that looks like in bulk lubricant is you can imagine you've got a whole bunch of these additives and they are going to be attracted to the water. So the heads are going to be attracted to the water and of course the tails retain themselves in the oil. All right, so how do we go about making a detergent molecule? Well, it's actually an acid-base reaction. So we take an acid and a base and we make a salt plus a water. So in this instance, Right? It's an organic acid, uh, which is sometimes called a substrate. And we're going to react that with a some kind of metal base. So either a metal oxide, a metal hydroxide, maybe even a metal carbonate. Now the thing is, we want the salt product, which is the detergent molecule, we want it to be oil soluble, which limits our choices of metals. So in the group one metals, it limits us to lithium, sodium, or potassium. In group two, we can select magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. And in group three, we can only pick aluminium. And that's why you'll typically see these as the um, molecules in use. So you probably would have heard of calcium or magnesium detergents, especially in the TBN world. Barium used to be used a little bit more, but there were concerns about toxicity. The others can sometimes be a little bit expensive, but they are used. Now, the equation that I'm showing here is what we call stoichiometric. You might remember this from high school chemistry. Effectively, what it means is that everything is in the correct quantity to um, balance out this equation. So if I were to give a really, really basic acid-base reaction, we've got hydrochloric acid on and uh, sodium hydroxide reacting to make salt plus water. And the salt and the water would be table salt, right? So sodium chloride and water. And if you look at that equation, everything is perfectly balanced. So all the letters on one side are present on the other side. Now, what happens if I have more sodium hydroxide than I need to balance out that reaction? Well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna force some sodium hydroxide into the products of that reaction, right? So if I took uh, the reactants and the products, I'm gonna have some excess sodium hydroxide. And when we do this, what we call it is overbasing. So this is where the idea of overbased detergents comes from. So we, if we have an excess of base in our acid-base reaction, we'll end up with base as part of the products. All right, so how does that maybe work in uh, the making of a TBN molecule? So if we have a sulfonic acid, and we react it with a calcium carbonate, what we would get as products is calcium sulfonate, water, and calcium carbonate. Where calcium sulfonate is the detergent molecule, and calcium carbonate is the overbase molecule, right? Now, there are many, many different types of acids that can be used. I'm using sulfonic acid as an example, but you might have heard of uh, salicylic acids as another example. Um, carboxylic acids can be used and they impart different properties to the detergent. It's a whole nother video for me to go through and talk about uh, different types of acids and um, their effect on the finished product. Uh, but that is something that we'll get to eventually. All right, so if we were to take this, what does it look like? Well, 
Um, fortunately, they look like a kind of a micellar structure. That's what we call it. So remember that the that the polar heads of these detergent molecules want to try and get away from oil, which they're bathed in, um, and they want to seek out like-for-like -like molecules. So the way that they do this is that they agglomerate together and form what's actually a 3D spherical structure. Now, when we overbase the reaction, we're going to end up with some excess, in this case, calcium carbonate, and it's actually going to sit in the middle. So now we've got to think about what is the purpose of the TBN molecule? Now, you'll remember it's effectively to neutralize acids. And where do the acids come from? Well, if you remember from our TAN video, there's organic acids and mineral acids, right? Which effectively come from either oxidation byproducts or contamination of the oil. So that's what we're trying to neutralize with these TBN molecules. How do we neutralize it? Well, it's an acid-base reaction. So acid plus base makes salt plus water. In this instance, it's acid in oil being neutralized by a TBN molecule and produces salt and water. Okay, so now we've got this micellar structure with calcium carbonate on the inside. We need to get the calcium carbonate to the acid, right? That's our challenge. Now, fortunately, right, acids are always in water, right? So obviously, um, you know, if you had hydrochloric acid, it's the dissociation of hydrogen ions and chloride ions in water. Same with sulfuric acid, right? Um, and what we need is a transport mechanism. And this micellar structure gives us a really good transport mechanism to get the calcium carbonate to the acid. So how does that work? Well, if you can imagine it getting close to the water, now we have hydrophobic tails, right? So they want to get away from the water phase. And effectively what that's gonna mean is that at the, at the boundary, right, all of those detergent molecules are going to shy away and it's going to open up the micellar structure to allow the transport of the calcium carbonate across the barrier and into the water. Sometimes it's called a kind of a, a, a collision or a sticky collision or something like that. But the advantage of this is that you'll see that my detergent molecule is still intact. So it can still go along and perform keep clean, um, uh, keep clean activities within the oil, right? So it can find polar contaminants and it can find things like um, you know sludge for example um, and help uh, suspend it in the oil in the meantime the calcium carbonate is going to react with the hydro uh, sulfuric acid to neutralize it so again how does it do that neutralization it's an acid base reaction so acid plus base makes salt plus water or in this instance right acid in oil plus tbn gives salt and water in the specific scenario I'm talking about, it's sulfuric acid plus calcium carbonate is going to make calcium sulfate plus water uh, plus a little bit of carbon dioxide for, for good measure. Right? So that's how the TBN molecule works. I hope that's been a really um, quick introduction to TBN additives, how they're manufactured and exactly what they do when they're in the lubricant. Um, that transport mechanism is something that's really important. TBN molecules are so widespread and so important to so many applications that I'll be doing more videos on this, um, but hopefully this was a really good start. As usual, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, this has been Lubrication Explained.